In this video, I want to show you how to replace your radiator, which is located right underneath this cover. So let's get started. Now you don't have to remove the wheel. I did only for camera purposes, but if you come through the passenger side wheel well, you can see the radiator pedcock right here. Take a 19 millimeter socket. I built myself out of some aluminum foil, a little um, shield right here so that the coolant, instead of it shooting straight out on the frame, it can follow down and fall into my collection bucket. Take a 19 millimeter socket, put it on the um, drain plug and unscrew it. It should not be too tight. If it is, Try to work it gently, you don't want it to break. And unscrew it until coolant starts coming out. Don't take this out though, because if you do, it'll start shooting backwards. And now we'll just let this drain. In order to speed up the process, let's go remove the radiator cap. There actually is no radiator cap, it's just an overflow cap. This is what holds pressure on the system, so we'll just unthread this. Air will go in as coolant tries to go out. I need to get this cover out of the way, and in order to do that, I have to get the spare tire tool slash jack handle out of the way. So just unclip it from its retainers and set it aside. And now we can just go along and undo all the push clips that hold this down. I don't have any of my original push clips anymore. These are all aftermarket push clips that someone has put in. So whatever yours are, just go ahead and remove them in whatever way they need to be removed. With all the push clips removed, don't forget there are two over here. Lift this up and slide it out of the way. Let's get this air intake out of here. Lift up on this. Underneath, you'll see the wire. Follow it and unplug the mass airflow sensor. There we go. And I'm trying to remove this whole unit, so I'm just gonna unbolt the clamp on the throttle body and take this out as one whole assembly. There is another connector over here. Unplug that. And to actually get to the throttle body, I need to remove this cover, three eight millimeter bolts. Remove these two hoses. And then unscrew this clamp with an eight millimeter socket. Now you can wiggle this whole assembly, pull it right off the throttle body, pick it up and set it aside. With a pair of pliers, remove this upper radiator hose clamp. And then you can break the hose free off the radiator. Sometimes it needs to be persuaded a little bit, so very gently with the um, pliers, break it free. Now you can slide it off. Since the coolant has mostly drained, there shouldn't be any in this hose, which there isn't, that's perfect. On the driver's side, there is the overflow hose. Remove the clamp, break the hose free very gently and remove the hose. Now I will be removing this overflow tank only for visual purposes. You don't have to remove it, but otherwise there's no way I can get the camera in here to show you how to remove these um, lines, the transmission lines. So I'd like to get a better angle for you. Again, you do not have to remove this. Okay, here we go. Now you can see a lot better. This is what's holding the line on here, this plastic clip. So remove it. Just pry on the two little tabs. At this point, you want to spray some rust penetrant here to lubricate the line, but also clear out any debris. And then you need one of these tools uh, that is specifically made for these lines here. Find the right size, slide it over, and press it in. Make sure you have a collection bucket underneath to catch any fluid that might come out. Okay, yep. Once it goes in all the way and it bottoms out, go ahead and pull on the line. There we go. Take the line out, get your tool off, and then we'll do the same thing to the lower line, which is straight down. And with the line out of the way, you can remove this eight millimeter bolt that holds on the fan shroud. There's one on this side and then one on the other side. So do both. Now you can pull the shroud. At this point, you'll see that the fan shroud is missing as well as the fan. I only remove these for camera purposes so that I can actually get you a decent angle at what I'm doing. Otherwise, I would not have removed them. And I have done this job with both of these still in the car. All you have to do is just push the fan shroud out a little bit and you have plenty of room to work with. The radiator slides straight up from its position. I'm gonna go ahead and close my pet cock so that it can stop dripping. Now I'm gonna remove the lower radiator hose. I'm gonna get my pliers in here. If you have a pair of hose clamp pliers, the special kind might be more beneficial to use those just because it'll be easier. But as you can see, regular pliers work just as well. It just might be a little tougher to hold onto the clamp, seeing that it's at an angle here. Pull the clamp off, 
set it aside. And now let's get the hose off of the radiator. Give the hose a twist, pull it off of the radiator. All right, set this hose aside. Now the radiator is held on by two mounts at the top. Let's remove both of those, one on each side. 10 millimeter socket, get the bolt out. Be careful, it's a two piece thing. There's the jack handle slash spare tire tool holder and then the mount for the radiator that's bolted on underneath it. Okay, this rubber got stuck on the radiator. I'm gonna try and pull this off now. That way I have it for reinstallation. You'll have to reuse that piece. There we go. Take this out. Now we can pick the radiator straight up. Okay, now pull it up and out of the other side. And there's your radiator. Now grab your radiator, slide it down, make sure it lines up with the rubber uh, bushings at the bottom, the rubber mounts, I should say. Okay, looks like it lines up on both sides, so that's perfect. I'm gonna show you a close up in a second, but to secure it uh, so I can let go, I'm just gonna start on this mount here, and now I can let go. When you slide this down, make sure the rubber bushing is fully seated, the bolt hole lines up, and then this tab over here slides in as well. Thread it on. Do the same on this side. Now let's get the lower hose connected to the radiator. Let's put the hose clamp back on. Try to position it in a similar position as it was before. That will give it the best chance of sealing up. Wiggle the hose around, or try to, to make sure that it's actually sealed up properly which it is, so that's perfect. Wipe off any other oils and debris that have made their way down here. As always with a new radiator, make sure the petcock is fully closed, just like this one. Sometimes they don't come fully closed from the factory, and obviously as you fill it, it's gonna come right out the bottom, and you don't want that to happen. On the side here, make sure the fan shroud goes down into this hook on the radiator, on both sides, that is. Mine did, perfect. Now you can put in the transmission lines, Make sure that it snaps into place like that. Give it a tug to make sure it doesn't pop back out. Bring in the safety lock and lock it over like that. Now let's bolt up the fan shroud. Put in the two little eight millimeter headed bolts that held this on. There's one on each side. Let's get the upper radiator hose in. Bottom it out. Put the clamp back on. Now bring in this cover here at the front, line it up, and let's put in all the push clips that hold this on. And don't forget to put back the spare tire tool. And lastly, the air filter housing with the rest of the intake here. Slide that over the throttle body, just like this. You had two hoses, that went in here. Let's tighten up this clamp. Let's make sure this is pushed on all the way when you tighten the clamp. Nice and snug, these hoses are in. There's a wire here, reconnect the sensor here. And on this side you had the mass airflow sensor, reconnect that. Make sure it clicks, secure the harness, and secure the air filter housing. Now it's time to fill up the cooling system. What I have set up here is a spill-proof funnel, which also helps bleed the system. Because this is now the highest point in the cooling system, naturally the air will want to rise up into my funnel and not get trapped in the system. The only downside with doing this on this type of system is this overflow tank is also the filler and it's not supposed to be full. If you fill this all the way up, you are way over full and it's going to start spilling out once it warms up. So once you do fill this all the way up, if you choose to raise it up into the funnel, you want to make sure you drain some afterwards either with a turkey baster or a fluid extraction syringe, whatever you have, or just drain it out the radiator just a little bit. But there's a mark, which I'll show you in a second and you don't want to be above that mark, otherwise you're overfull. So what I'm going to do here is just put in a little bit, looks like this wasn't 
tight all the way. Make sure this is tight if you use this type of funnel, otherwise it'll leak out here as you, uh, as you do this. So now let's go ahead and put in the appropriate amount of coolant. It'll take about two gallons, maybe two and a half, depending on how much you drained. And if you don't know what kind of coolant to use, refer to your owner's manual and uh, make sure you use the appropriate type. If you look closely, you can see right there, it says cold fill on the reservoir. That's exactly where you want to fill it up to. If you put a flashlight in the, either in the tank or to the side of it, you'll see the coolant line, the level, and just make sure you don't go past it unless you are actively trying to bleed it in your um, funnel here. So I actually filled mine right up to that fill mark. So now let me run you through the bleeding procedure. First, you wanna wait for it to naturally stop bubbling. If it's still bubbling, just give it a minute. Wait for it to stop getting air out of the system. And once it has done that, let's jump inside and fire it up. All right, now with the key in the ignition, let's fire it up. Starts right up, that's perfect. Now, once it's turned on, let's uh, turn on some heat here. So turn on the blower, make sure the AC is off. Turn the heat all the way up. I have this digital display. If you have the analog one with the knobs, just turn it all the way up. You want the coolant circulating through that heater core and I'm gonna set it to vent. That way I can feel when the air blows warm over here. So I'm just gonna give it a minute and then uh, wait for the air to blow over here. While it's warming up, pay attention to this temperature gauge and make sure it doesn't go above the halfway mark. Right now it's still cold, I just turned it on, but once it reaches full operating temperature, shut it off uh, and uh, obviously make sure you have heat through the vents. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.